What's cracking, everybody? Benny Lava here, bringing you another Working Stiffs StarCraft 2 replay. I am a little sick, uh, so don't mind if you hear me cough or uh, if there's snot that drips down my nose. I apologize in advance. Uh, but this is a really great game. It is one of our first games with a subscriber who is an honorary Working Stiffs anyway, since he does work part time. Uh, and this is on a map called the Fastest Map Possible, and it's by a dude named Wolf. So let us introduce the players. This is a free for all, or as I like to call it, a fuffa. Let's go clockwise, starting from the top left, spawning as a Protoss, Yolanda. Next is Cowpuss, or Cowpiss, as we like to call him to make it a little bit easier on everybody. And um, I actually asked him what this is, and apparently Kalpwis is a soda in Japan. So that is where his username originated from. Here on the right side is the Protoss Romork. This guy is like 136th in the world. Uh, just look up his stats. This guy is crazy, and he is a uh, working stiff as well. In the southern part is WS Hefe spawning as the Red Terran. In the bottom right is Poet spawning as a Zerg. And here is our uh, subscriber. His username is Nutless Squirrel. He's playing as Squirrel spawning as a Terran. And I'm not sure right now. He decides to lift off his command center. And I guess use it to scout or something. So already his tactics already fit in with the WS strategies. Uh, so we love this guy. Shout out to you, Nutless Squirrel. <laughs> with your flying command center to do who knows what. To the lower left side of the map is me spawning as a Terran using my friend's account, Pushku. And on the last part of the map... Spawning as a Protoss is my man Mongizzle. So again, this is a free-for-all on a map called Fastest Map Possible. And you can already tell each person has this little pubic patch of crystals and uh, this gas right here. Now the gas is just ridiculous. You see these guys? They're like on crack, man. They're like, yo, give me that shit, give me that shit. And uh, it takes a little bit longer for these guys on the crystals or the minerals uh, to gather them. But you can tell by just the numbers here on the top right that they are just being increased exponentially as people build up. Yolanda Vega deciding to put up two nexuses. Or is it nexi? I'm not sure what is the correct uh, plural form of a nexus. Apparently Kalpis, I missed this here. Kalpis going in with some zealots, attacking Yolanda already. Gonna get this pylon so we can unpower this cannon and this gateway. So Yolanda throwing down a Stargate, a pylon, and an additional pylon. And looks like Kalpis forces have dwindled down to this one hero zealot who is not going to do much now. But Kalpis really determined to mess up Yolanda because we all know Yolanda likes to do douchebaggery tactics so is this going to stop what he's about to do? So as this battle is going on you can see just the amount of stargates a nice little rope by Kalpis again these crackhead Probes doing a great job gathering minerals and lesbian gas. And here comes a force by Romark. Stalkers, uh, some zealots, and uh, these sentries going down to the south. And deciding, not sure who's he going to attack. Hefe is right here. Uh, but Poet sending in some lings uh, to try to scout or to try to do some kind of harassment. But these Marauders are going to eliminate them. And this is not looking good 
for Hefe. He doesn't have cloak research yet. So these Marauders are stuck here on the right side. And it looks like Hefe is going to be forced to already move out. So at the 7 minute mark, Hefe looks like he's going to be eliminated. Or will he have enough time to come back? We shall see. All his SCVs or SUVs, as I like to call them always, are just chilling, waiting for their death. Hefe deciding to go to Poet's base, his north part of the base, and uh, start to build up there. Two hatcheries or one, one layer and another hatchery by Poet. What's our man Squirrel doing? He has, look at this, he has a party going on, an SUV party. What, what? Chuka, 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 chuka. So, what does he have built? Starport going down, factory and two barracks already down. And a whole bunch of command centers probably be good. Yeah, morphing into a planetary fortress. Mongo helping Kalpis with the attack. I just missed that. But he has gateways not even not even research to or he is researching or did he already research it where is this oh there it is so warp games going down mongo gonna control this this zelnaga watchtower and what do i have i have three planetary fortresses guarding my entrance gonna throw down some turrets so i got some air uh, I have a fusion core ready, getting ready to make some battle cruisers. And I'm gonna. I think my plan was to just go battle cruisers because that's what Terran do, does. So here comes Romork taking out Hefe, going up to the north to Kalpis's base. And uh, Romork looks like he's gonna eliminate another working stiff here I can see in the minimap that Mongo is moving down to our subscribers base what are you doing Mongo this is how we treat our subscribers he's going straight for him these void rays are gonna kill all these buildings here so shout out to Mongo to, for showing Nutless Squirrel or Squirrel a warm welcome into his first game with the Working Stiffs. <laughs> squirrel, oh my god look at that, it's like killing babies. Two S SCVs going to be uh, escaping but look at this, his buildings are just going to be destroyed at the same time Kalpis his nexus has been destroyed by Romark and Mongo finishing up his warm welcome to Squirrel there you have it so <laughs> Squirrel has not built his base because Mongo eliminated him right away and by the way, shout out to some of our other subscribers. Uh, Livin305, what's up, dude? Shout out to you. You have asked to uh, get a shout out, so there goes your shout out. He is one of our uh, most active, I guess, subscribers in our channel. He has funny ass comments. One of them, uh, I forget which game it was, but he says, oh, well, does it. Jersey Gun always get DP'd, and that is very true. So as we watch Romox forces going into Mongo's base, let me give another shout out to Quester Bob. Quester Bob, we added you, but I haven't seen you online, so we, you know, we didn't have a chance to play yet. And Axelin, yo, just I haven't seen you online. Just sign in. You know, we play, we play at night, uh, Eastern Standard Time. So you know, just sign in and. You know, we'll hook up and, and play some games. And hopefully none of the working sis will treat you like Mongo, uh, who will eliminate you the first chance that he gets. So here comes Romark. This guy is ridiculous. He's gonna be taking out his third 
his third working stiff right here. Void rays, Mongo's void rays are gone. This is revenge for Squirrel. And this is it. This looks like it's going to be game for Mongo. So, Romork taken out. Hefe, who is trying to build up with some mules. I don't think it matters if you have mules at this point. Uh, and and Kalpis is totally gone and has left the game. And apparently here I missed it, but uh, Hefe ha was forced to move his tarports back to his own base uh, because these Hydras or some attacking units had taken them out. So I am still in good shape. I haven't been attacked. I'm, I'm wondering where everybody is. I have no idea what's going on. And I just see Mongo has not built their base. So I don't know who's doing the damage here. I am blind as you can see. I'm, I don't think I even, um, I even scouted. Yeah. I didn't even scout anything. So I don't even have battle cruisers yet. I got two Vikings. And here comes Romark finishing up Mongo's base. You can see Mongo's base, not much left. And now Romark going in for the kill for Yolanda. But look at this. Yolanda Vega with a massive amount of Void Rays. Just powering up and just vaporizing all these Protoss units. The supply here is at 300 cap, not from the regular 200. So here is Yolanda with just a massive force of Void Rays going in and going to destroy Poet's main army. Poet's other army Hydras are beginning to retreat, but it is too late. You can see here at... Yolanda's base he has fortified himself with cannons and just has built a massive amount of starports so that is what Yolanda's up to and here comes an attack but he decides to move out not sure why but this is just a crazy amount he is supply capped already at 300 so these are the most avoid rays you can make Romork, I don't know why, decided to build three additional, uh, three additional colossi, maybe to attack these cannons. But this will be no use for this void ray attack. So, Yolanda going into Romork's base, who has eliminated, you know, three people in this game, and going to be doing cleanup duty. At his base, gonna be taking out his nexus. Well, look at that. It was like two seconds, and boom, it was gone. So, probes gonna be killed. Look at this. That is just ridiculous. 300, 300 void rays just doing massive amount of damage. All these pylons gone. At the same time, Hefe decides to attack Poet, whose main force was eliminated by Yolanda with these Cloak Banshees. Poet does not even have any uh, any detection here, or how is he being detected here? I don't see a uh, an Overseer. Oh, here it is. So, Poet able to to fend off that attack by Hefe, but here comes Yolanda. Romork leaves the game, Mongo leaves the game, and Yolanda gonna go in, take out this planetary fortress, take out this second planetary fortress. Look at that, it's like three, four seconds, and boom, it is gone. Hefe, Hefe's planetary fortresses and command centers are destroyed. And we got these two turrets gonna take out like or put out like two shots and be destroyed. Starport's gone. Everything is just gonna be cleaned up. Hefe, as a last ditch effort, is gonna go to Yolanda's base and is gonna be surprised by more 
void rays and these cannons, who can detect them?